So you guys should have read and done some of the vocabulary or terms and names for this section, which is on the physical geography of our region. We're studying Central America, Caribbean. There, It all is right there um, for you. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about pretty much everything as far as physical geography. We'll do a little comparing and contrasting as we're talking, too. So this area here... Central America, they, which we'll start with first, they actually call it kind of a land bridge, and it connects North America to South America, right? What countries make up Central America? What countries make it up? Tomes? Does anyone have a pencil? All right, Natalie's got one. All right, good. Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Costa Rica, and Panama. Um, they call Central America an isthmus. Okay, what did you guys, when you looked up isthmus, what did you say or find out an isthmus is? Jimmy? It's, um, it's an area of land, um, no part of it can be more than Two hundred kilometers wide, and it connects two large mm -hmm. areas of land. Good, and well, this one, the widest part is one hundred and twenty-five miles, um, but that you're right on that. Um, no place on this isthmus. So, it, uh, Central America is basically considered the, the southern part of North America. Okay, it connects. Oops, I thought I had it on ten, and I don't. I put it on ten. Okay, so uh, connects South America and North America today. Oh, it's thinking still. Of course, it's always thinking. Um, there we go. All right, connects those two areas, but the the widest it is is 125 miles. That's you know a couple hour drive, not very long of a drive. But we'll talk about how uh, driving across Central America would be like here pretty soon. So no, uh, on the eastern side there's water, then on the western side there's water. What's the western side, the body of water uh, that is on the western side of Central America? Shane? Pacific. And what's the, on the eastern side? Braylon? Caribbean Sea. Caribbean Sea. Good. And if we wanted to travel across by car, what would it be like? What would traveling across this isthmus be like? Would it be easy? Quick two hour drive? Be just straight. Mm -hmm. Jimmy? It's mountainous and rugged. Yeah. So, what would travel be easier? Be very, very hard because you would think just looking at this map, yeah, it looks like oops, straight shot across, couple hour drive. Not really because there's mountains, there are volcanoes, and that makes it very difficult to travel. There's not very many rivers, so you can't just jump and do travel by river. It's very difficult to cross because of all the mountains and volcanoes. You can see on the map on 59, it's more of a physical map showing you the elevation and how hard it is to cross. There is a waterway to cross. What's the major waterway that a lot of people use? Big ships, transportation, what's that waterway? Mason? Panama. Panama Canal, and that's that shortcut through. And we'll talk about when we get closer to Panama, we will talk more about that later. Okay, so very, very difficult to travel because of the rugged land and lack of waterways. All right, Central America, the Isthmus. Uh, moving to, to the Caribbean, all right, if Central America is more like a land bridge, what are the Caribbean islands more like? Well, what are they? I just told you what the Caribbean are. Natalie? Islands. Bunch of islands. Tons of islands. And what did they call this large group of islands? What do we have? We have a name for it, Dalton? Archipelago. 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 Uh, which is a large group of islands. And they're kind of... Almost on this like curve of these islands, and they stretch from the southern tip of Florida, you know, the Florida Keys, all the way down to basically the tip of South America. And they sort of what we've done is split them up, the islands kind of, and into two major groups. We've got the Greater Antilles, and we've got the Lesser Antilles. All right. So what? 
islands do the greater Antilles make up? Natalie? Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, and Puerto Rico. Good. So the greater Antilles, <clears throat> in an easy way to remember, greater is bigger. You, these are your bigger islands. You've got Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, Puerto Rico. The big islands make up the greater Antilles, bigger islands. So we're not missing any really big islands here. So your bigger islands make up the greater Antilles. The second group of Antilles are called the Lesser Antilles. So if the Greater Antilles make up the big islands, what type of islands do the Lesser Antilles make up? Jimmy? Smaller. The smaller islands. Okay, and so I'm not going to make you name all of the small islands because we would be here all day because there are thousands of these islands in here. Thousands of islands in there. So we can't name them all. So if I were to say, well, kind of t tell me where the Lesser Antilles are, which islands are, how, how would you explain it? What did they say about the Lesser Antilles, which islands are those, or how, where they're located? Natalie? Um, it stretches from the Virgin Islands in the north to Trinidad and Tobago in the south. Very good. So the Lesser Antilles go all the way from the Virgin Islands. Here's your Virgin Islands. Right here is the Virgin Islands down to Trinidad and Tobago, so boom. So all of these islands are the Lesser Antilles, and then your bigger ones, bigger, bigger, there's Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, <laughs> Cuba, Jamaica. Can't see them on there. Okay. So there's thousands of islands in the Lesser Antilles. Does everybody familiar with the, bah um, the Bahamas, right? Which are over here, actually. Everyone's heard of the Bahamas, right? Everybody wants to go to the Bahamas. Did you know, though, that the Bahamas are made up of 700, more than 700 islands? 700 islands. When I, before I started researching this stuff, I wouldn't have thought that. I would have thought, you know, like, 10. Like 10 right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the map here, oh, 10 or so islands. No, over 700. And, and they're not all there because there's some that are so small. They don't even place them on a map because they're so teeny tiny. There's 16 they're 16 labeled? Okay. And that's the same with a lot of these islands in the Caribbean. There are just little pieces of island all throughout the Caribbean. How, what are most of these islands made of? If you flip it to 60, it might kind of help you. What are most of these islands the product of? Or how come we have these islands? Brock? They're the tops of underwater Yeah. Good. They're the tops of underwater mountains. They're the tops of volcanoes. Some of them might have started as coral reefs, and throughout time they were kind of pushed up and eventually turned into flat little islands. So a lot of this came from tectonic plates. You guys familiar with that? What are those? What are tectonic plates? <coughs> Tom, do you know what a tectonic plate does? Mm, sort of. Yeah, and so when the, these tectonic plates shift, what usually happens? Earthquakes. Earthquakes is one thing. What else, Brock? Um, um, volcanoes. Yeah, so you've got earthquakes and volcanoes. If you look um, on the map on 60, you can see all of the active volcanoes and um, the... the uh, oh, it's made of volcanoes. That's all it is. And the arrows show you the direction of the plate movement. Oh, Haiti had a huge earthquake not too long ago. That's why Haiti has a lot of earthquakes, because there's this huge tectonic plate that is all throughout here and over here. And so when it, when it shifts, boom, earthquake. And then if you're in islands and, and near the water and you have an earthquake, what is going to happen? What could happen also then, Shane? Tsunamis. And that happened in Japan. So um, earthquakes out here in the islands are not good. All right? This is also an area for hurricanes, which we'll get to in a little bit too. So... Um, earthquakes and volcanoes are very, very frequent all the time. Lots of damage to the regions. You know, when, when, I don't even remember when that was, that Haiti earthquake. It might have been two, it might have been more than two years ago now. But it caused severe damage. They are still cleaning up from it because it's caused so much damage to their region. So, was, three was it three years ago? Yeah. Jimmy? Um, was the Dominican Republic? Um, no, 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 because it was just on that eastern portion of it. They might have felt some of the uh, 
shocks and things, but not the, as as major as it was on the western part. Rob. Um, Haiti's a part of like a really big island. Yes. Kind of, and stuff. Um, and there have been a big tsunami in part of Haiti. There could have been. I don't believe there was the tsunami. There were many big waves and things like that, but not a tsunami. But when Japan had their earthquake, you, they had a tsunami. What is like a tsunami? What is it classified as? Uh, I don't know how many feet it has to be classified as, but it's gigantic waves. Like how big? How big? Yeah. We can look that up in a little bit and see what the what it has to be. I looked him up once for Jeff and check in because he wanted to see a tsunami. So uh, we'll look and see what it has to be, well, how high it has to be for classified. Tsunami? What were you saying, something, Natalie? Oh, um, I don't even remember. Okay, that's right. <laughs> Okay, so that's a little bit about the physical features. Let's talk about the climate and vegetation of this animal area. If we were to compare them, if I said just tell me something that both of them have in common, what do both areas have in common, Dalton? The climate is sunny and warm. Sunny and warm. All the time. People go there all the time. They go in the winter time, well, our winter time, and it's sunny and warm. Or they go in our summertime, and it's sunny and warm. All right. Now you don't want to typically go there in like to the Caribbean in the late summer, early fall, because does anyone know what season that is in the Caribbean? Jellyfish. Uh, yeah. Don't <laughs> I don't know if the jellyfish have a season necessarily, but you want to be careful out there. They do have a lot of jellyfish. Brock. Hurricane season. And hurricane season usually ends in November sometime. Might be the. End of November, middle of November. There is a hurricane forming right now near Mexico. There was in the newspaper. So that's hurricane season. So you want to kind of stay away from that area in hurricane season. So that's why most people go in the wintertime. All right, let's start with Central America. What is Central America's climate like? What's the climate in Central America? Jimmy? <coughs> Sunny and warm, and, and what, el what else does it, it, besides being sunny and warm? Braylon? Humid tro tropical and tropical savanna. Yeah, a humid tropical, tropical savanna. Tropical meaning uh, lots of warm, lots of wet, moist area. But um, at different areas are different type of tropical. The tropical savanna, which is a little more dry. It could be tropical. I know, they got me in first hour too. It's tropical. So, um, on the eastern side, it's more of a humid tropical, which is your moist and wet. On the western side, it's more of a savanna tropical, which is more dry and hot. All right. So, if, since, since it is more dry tropical on the western side, <coughs> the Pacific side, that is, what type of a vegetation? And look at the map and see what is all along the western side of Central America. What kind of vegetation are we talking about over there? What kind of vegetation would it be like? Mason? Um, on the western side, no, because it's dry. There's lots of volcanoes. Not on the western side. What, what kind of vegetation would, would, would it be, if any? Rock. Did you say no? No, that you don't want to answer, or there's no vegetation? No vegetation. <laughs> There's no vegetation, and that's because it is so dry over there, um, and the volcanoes and mountains make it very difficult to have much vegetation. A lot of it has been cleared um, because of all of the mountains and volcanoes. They do have some plantations and ranches, but vegetation over here is very little. Yes? Doesn't Indonesia have thousands of islands, too? Yes, they do. Good. Nice job. Um, and the Philippines, all over there, they have some too. In Asia. Okay, so if the Pacific side is no vegetation, Mason, what about the Caribbean side? What do we have over there? Mm hmm. Because you just said it a little bit ago. Yeah, that's the rainforest side, the Caribbean side, the humid side, the moist and wet side. That is the side where we have our, our rainforests. Lots of them. And when we did our bell ringer yesterday, you were walking in a rainforest up in a swinging bridge in the canopy. I think scared. Swinging bridges? Yeah, I would be a little scared in a rainforest. I was scared going on the swinging bridge.